The key to successful equity crowdfunding is realizing what you are in fact doing, selling. Every successful equity crowdfunding effort is in fact not about funding, but about marketing, advertising, and ultimately, selling your offering. Please welcome Samson Williams, Chief Strategy Officer of CoFunder, to share his insights on benchmarking crowd regulations by taking you on a constitutional journey via USA and Africa to the European Union. Everybody. I feel like clapping for myself is quite the introduction. Um, I'm very excited to be here representing CoFunder and CDIPS here at uh, Crowd Dialogue. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about regulations. Are there any lawyers in the room? You can all leave. Um, because talking about regulations between the US, the EU, and Africa, we have to keep it at a pretty high level. And as you can tell from my accent, I'm one of the black Irish from Washington, DC. So last year, Julia stood up on the stage and apologized. And so this year, on behalf of America, I'm sorry. So with no further ado, let's get into it. Because there's three basic keys to regulatory success. They're actually pretty high level. The first one being, know what you're doing. You're actually not doing crowdfunding. You're doing marketing. You're doing sales. If you run a platform, you're actually a grocery store. People are putting up their securities, whether it's debt, whether it's equity, and people want to come to your grocery store, and they want to be able to confidently invest and buy that product. So what, what are on your shelves? You actually need to know that. What is it? What are the terms? Is there any contaminated milk on your shelves? And so when we think about crowdfunding, we actually need to think about we're selling our product, our good, our service. We're selling our offering. And so with every regulation, there are slightly different rules that say this is what you can do, this is what you can't do. So many times you can't use puffery, you can't use extravagant languages, you can't say I'm gonna guarantee you a thousand percent return. That's actually a good thing. Because at the end of the day, your consumers, they wanna know that they can be able to trust you. Because the second thing that you're doing is you're actually developing trust. As crowdfunding professionals, as crowdfunding platforms, you're in the business of trust. Because people need to know when they come to your platform, when they look at your offering, I can trust what they're doing. I love what Investor does out of uh, the Nordic states. When I go to their website, it's very clean, it's very sharp. It lets me know exactly what the offering is. I have great confidence in it. And so I'm like, hmm, I love what they do. And so the reason this says campaigns is because every 90 days or so, I talk to the good folks from Nigeria, the, the Securities Exchange from Nigeria. So all my rich uncles from Nigeria, they've been running campaigns for decades, right? But how do we introduce crowdfunding into Africa? So Kevin Allen, who's over there, he's gonna talk about that in a little bit. Because the simple part of it right now and throughout Africa, there are no regulated platforms in the equity and debt space. There's some, crowd, there's some donation and rewards, but no equity and debt. Why? Part of it is policy, part of it is regulations. The other part of it is trust. How do you develop that trust? So people feel confident in putting their hard earned money into your platform and in turn uh, promoting entrepreneurs and startups, not only in Africa, but across the world. So I'm very excited about this next topic because this next topic is actually what's come to dominate what we're doing here, uh, come to dominate crowdfunding in general, and that's blockchain. I'm sure that everybody understands blockchain. You've probably heard about it. So I like to break it down, not focusing on how blockchain works, but focusing on what it can do. So in blockchain, the very simple way, it's, a, it's technology, so you can trust a stranger. That's it. We're not gonna get too into details, just think, it's technology that allows me to trust a stranger. And so out of blockchain has come an amazing, in the last uh, eight, in the last 12 months, has come an amazing feat called ICOs. Everybody's heard of ICOs? Excellent. I see a couple people not raising your hand. So ICOs stand for Initial Coin Offering. And I love ICOs. ICOs are crowdfunding 2.0. They are crowdfunding on speed. They're amazing. So you'll see a lot of the regulations that come down, they'll say, nothing. Because there are no regulations for crowdfunding, or rather for initial coin offerings. But they're very disruptive. As CDEPs, as someone who has a platform, none of this went through our platform. 
None of this went through any of the regulated platforms. When I say none of this, I'm really talking about the $2 billion that ICOs has raised just this year. None of it went through a regulated platform. So it's disruptive to our, our industry. It's disruptive to the VC, the venture capital industry. It's disruptive to the hedge funds. It actually just has the capability of disrupting all of capital markets. So that's gonna be a very interesting thing because as it says, what are we supposed to do in the face of an onslaught of something that literally moves at the speed of the internet. So recently you might have heard that China had something to say about ICOs, uh, Russia had something to say about ICOs. My good friends from, the, from Italy this morning just told me that China is once again backing ICOs, our Bitcoin, and I was like, well that sort of ruins my whole presentation. And so you've seen all of this, there's been lots of media, the market's been like this for Bitcoin, the value went up, it went down, it's been quite the roller coaster. So they've lost around $60 billion over the last three weeks. It's now sort of stabilized, it's going back up. And why this is important is because on one hand, you have the good people from in America, like Jamie Dimon from JP Morgan Chase, who on Monday says, no, Bitcoin is a fraud. And then on Wednesday, after he had pushed the price down enough, they bought 19,000 coins. And so that's not hypocritical, that's just good old fashioned Wall Street. You know, you got to beat them up till you drive the price down. Um, and I actually stole one of these slides from Kevin that talks about what JP Morgan is actually up to. And again, it's market manipulation, but that's the, the big banks are recognized. Crowdfunding, this blockchain stuff, it's not a fad, it's not going to go away. While at the same time, Russia, they're like, hey, we like this cryptocurrency stuff. We should get involved with it. And so all of this leads to the point where there's gonna be some regulations, which is actually a good thing. It's a good thing for us. It's a good thing for the industry because this industry is all about trust. And the great thing about regulations that come because whether you're Uncle Sam, Theresa May, um, or Angela Merkel, they all want their taxes. There's a billion dollar industry and right now they have no way of taxing it. So the government's gonna say, we want our cut. We want our cut of this billion dollar marketplace that's not just going to be here for a moment as a bubble, but it's going to last a while. So if you remember back into the dot-com bubble, where initially there was, there was all these businesses coming out of the dot-com bubble, and then it popped. And from that, you got great, strong companies. So blockchain and Bitcoin, they're very similar. Yes, there's a lot of things going on, but yes, once the bubble pops, many will survive, and those that do survive will be great companies. And so the question is, what does that mean for us for the future of crowdfunding? Because after the bubble pops, those that remain, they'll be vibrant. They'll have laid the infrastructure, whether it's Ethereum, or, or Bitcoin, or any of the other 800 or so ICOs that are out there, they will have laid the foundation for the next era of crowdfunding, crowdsourcing, and crowd sales. So I like to look at this in these three buckets. Crowd sales. As crowdfunding practitioners, we need to recognize what we're doing. We are literally selling an offering. And so the ICO world, they do it great. They create, they create a white paper. It's about, it's very rarely longer than 10 pages. Then they put up their offering on a website, anywhere. And they say, give us your money. That's it. The VCs love it. There are some technical people who actually understand the white paper, papers, and that's the extent of their due diligence. You have people who are on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, uh, Telegram, WhatsApp, WeChat, who are saying buy, 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 pumping up the market. Some of them are pumping and dumping because there are no regulations to this date of what you can do for initial coin offerings. So while we as an industry, particularly in the United States, we are, there's so much regulations, how are we supposed to compete with, with an entity that can literally go out and raise $2 billion in a year using websites? So that's one of the things we need to be aware about. So as regulations come down, and the regulations will look very similar to existing securities regulations. I was talking to uh, Maureen and she's like, the Howey test. I was like, what is the Howey test? She's like, basically, it's how you determine if something is a security. If you buy it and it gains value without you doing anything, it's a security. 
So keep that in mind as we think of, huh, people are going to come to you and say, I would like to put this offering on your platform. I would like to align to be able to put this offering on your platform. It's a token. It's a coin. It's an ICO. How are you going to manage that? Right now, there literally are no regulations, whether you're in the US, whether you're in Europe, whether you're in Africa. Fortunately, the regulations that do come down, they'll be very similar to existing regulations for securities. The other thing I like to talk about is crowdsourcing. So in the future, crowdsourcing is going to change how crowdfunding and entrepreneurs and startups actually get money, actually develop their product. A good example is Netflix. So Netflix has a rating system that says, hey, do you like this? Do you love this? Do you not like it at all? And so how they develop that rating system, they crowdsourced it. They got 480,000 people to dedicate some time to coming up with this algorithm. Top prize was a million bucks. So the winner got a million dollars. And in exchange, Netflix, they got all this free labor. So in the future, we're thinking that Netflix and other people who are beta testing products, they will go, they'll use cryptocurrencies, our tokens to reward participants. So if you're sequencing a gene, if you're building an algorithm, if you have something that requires everyone in this room to participate, you want to incentivize them to do so. So as a startup, I want to build a video game. I need 10 developers. So I go out and I say, hey, I'm going to give you this cryptocurrency, this token, if you participate. And in exchange, when the video game goes live, you can use your tokens to play it, to use it. That sounds great. There are also people going to use that, whether you're NASA or you have some technical skill, because as you, as you get the coins, it actually speaks to how many hours you worked on a particular subject. What is your expertise? And then later, you'll be able to sell and trade those. So that's how they'll add value. Lastly, I want to talk a little bit about Amazon. Recently, Amazon bought Whole Foods. It pretty much owns everything nowadays in the States. Um, it's going into alcohol distribution now. And so whether it's Amazon, Alibaba, Apple, you have these giant billion dollar companies that are sitting on mountains of cash. And we suspect that at some point, Amazon may say, hey, we're going to do our own ICO. We're going to issue our own cryptocurrency. We're going to give you four Amazon coins for every one euro. So in about an hour and a half, they raise 100 billion euros. They issue, four, uh, they issue 400 billion Amazon coins. Now they're a company, they've issued their own currency. And then they say to the governments, we've decided we no longer want to pay taxes because we don't use your money. Is that possible? Again, we're not looking at the now, we're not looking at the new, we're looking at what's going to happen. So that is theoretically possible, and I think that one of the big companies are going to actually do this. So that's one of the things that unfortunately we'll have to engage the lawyers to figure out how we're going to handle. So lastly, what can we do as an industry? It starts with awareness. We need to actually be aware, what are the marketplace? What's happening in the marketplace? What's going on? What is this blockchain stuff? What is this cryptocurrency stuff? How is it impacting us? And how is it going to impact us for the next five, 10 years going down? Because at the end of the day, we need to advocate for international standards. If we don't have international standards for crowdfunding, we will never be able to compete with the ICO world. ICO world is not going to go away just because some regulator waves a hand, waves a m magic wand. ICO, ICO world will continue to exist. And one of the best things that China did when they banned it last week was they told approximately 400 million consumers in China, you can't have this. You can't have this ICO, which made about 400 million people want it. <laughs> And so as we look at how we're going to compete as an industry in the future, we need to look at international standards so that as we go to address our regulators, as we go to address our, our government officials, we can say proactively, this is what we want to do so that we as an industry re remain competitive in the crowdfunding, crowd sales, and crowdsourcing markets. Thank you.